Well, hello there, Mark Risen Hopkins here. I am here today with another episode to teach you about blockchain. Today we're going to discuss what is an ICO. You've probably heard this term, you may know a little bit about it. We're gonna go in depth and explore all the angles. Stay tuned. <laughs> Now, ICO is a term, is an acronym that stands for Initial Coin Offering, and it bears a striking resemblance to the term IPO, or Initial Public Offering. I think this is by design, but it is somewhat misleading. If you're familiar with what an IPO is, the mechanisms with which uh, a company will go through to achieve public funding status with an IPO are vastly different from what you do with an ICO, and, and honestly, a lot more expensive. I won't go into the details on an IPO because that is a lot of legal and a lot of accounting, a lot of stuff that I'm not an expert at. I'll leave that for your lawyer. But I can tell you about what it takes to do an ICO. Most often, an ICO is done with an ERC-20 token. We have talked about ERC-20 in previous episodes. So you can check back to that to see what that's all about. But an ERC-20 token is a type of uh, fungible token that exists usually within the Ethereum network. Um, and what you'll do is if you're a company trying to ICO, you'll create your token, uh, which can represent anything from a share in the company to uh, an amount of utility to an amount of value, depending on how you set up your mechanics. And you will lock up those ERC-20 tokens in another smart contract that is your ICO smart contract. So let's say in our example, you have issued 100 tokens uh, for your ICO. That's a small number, but sure, we'll go with it. And you are going to be asking one Ethereum in value for each one of those tokens. So here's what that would look like. The smart contract acts as a sort of escrow system. And you have here are the terms of your smart contract. You'll set the value of each token, which as I said is one Ethereum equals one token. And then you'll set the soft cap, which is the minimum amount, of, minimum amount of money raised that will qualify as getting your project done. You'll set the hard cap, which is the maximum amount of money raised that you can possibly raise from this amount. You'll set a start date and an end date. You fund it with your tokens, and then from there, uh, the project is completely on autopilot. And you'll publish or publicize the smart contract address to those that you're going to allow to invest in it, They'll send it to Ethereum, and the Ethereum network will automatically send back to that same address the corresponding token for your ICO. So that's it. That's, that's the whole process. Why is that a complicated thing? It sounds pretty simple. Well, there's a lot that goes into doing an ICO that involves a lot of marketing activities, a lot of legal activities, a lot of accounting activities, and that's where things can get more complicated if you're talking about the ICO in the context of the larger business operations. But from a technical perspective, that's how an escrow contract works on the Ethereum network, and that's how uh, easy it is to crowdfund or uh, raise funds for uh, any endeavor that you're involved in, whether it be a company or a project. So what are some applications of the ICO process? As I said, your, your ERC-20 token can represent a share in the company. That's a specific type of ICO they have at term for now. They call that a security token offering or STO. And that is in fairly close to what is uh, an IPO in, in the common vernacular of business on Wall Street. Uh, there is uh, utility token raises, which is probably one of the more common things. Now that's uh, ostensibly going to be governed by the CFTC, which is a government organization that governs that type of uh, financial instrument, but the SEC uh, Securities Exchange Commission tends to claim jurisdiction even on most utility token projects. Um, and then there's, uh, there, there's uh, you could even apply this technology or process to short run or small projects. I've heard of artists trying to crowdfund an art project by simply publishing a smart contract address to their friends and family and, and, and uh, fans and uh, raising, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars which is, is just as easy to do as raising $30 million or $100 million for a large-scale business project. So hopefully you understand the technology now. You can see how you can apply it to your own ends. If you have questions, you have feedback, there's a variety of ways to get in touch with us. You should do so by doing one of those things that we listed on the screen, or uh, come back and check out a future episode. I'd love to have you back. <laughs>
So we talked about a couple videos in this episode. One of them was the ERC-20 video, which is right over here. Click it. You'll learn all about ERC-20 in case you forgot in that episode. And then here's a video randomly selected by my producer, guaranteed to be even more interesting. Of course.